Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Boo. Boo, I said. Hey, Boo. Mrs. Norton, where are you? Claudia, aren't you home? Oh, hello, Shakespeare, you old cat. Where's my wife? Where have you put her? Ah, so you're not talking, are you? Did you get your own tongue, you strong, silent cat, you? Claudia! Hey, Claudia! Well, all right, if you're not home. Here, Shakespeare, hang up my hat. No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, old boy, a little big for you. Well, come on in, Cat. We'll have a nice, quiet pipe and get along perfectly well by ourselves. Oh, McNaughton has a farm. You, you, on this farm there are some pigs. Oh, here, and a cat and a dog. Shakespeare, how'd you like to live on a farm? Lots of nice field mouse. Would you like a nice field mouse? Where are my matches? Shakespeare, where have you put my matches? Yeah, match it, match it. No, not you, not you. No, oh, here they are. Oh, McMonnell had a match. Here you. Ah, this is nice. Just us two boys. Hmm? What's that, Shakespeare? Where'd you say she went? Oh, you don't know, huh? Here you. And on that farm, you had a field mouth. Well, hello, Mother. Well, I'm glad somebody's home. Certainly I'm home. Where's your daughter? She's playing hooky. No, no, she isn't here. I thought maybe she was taking refuge with you. But wherever she is, she's got the dog. Now, look, Mama, you don't, you, you, you don't need to get worried. No, she'll be along in a minute. How are you feeling? <laughs> well, well, come on over after dinner. Fine, fine. Uh, we'll see you then. Goodbye. Hmm. Come on, Shakespeare. Come sit on the sofa next to me and we'll look into each other's eyes. <sighs> Say, this house seems awfully big and awfully empty, doesn't it, without my little wife? Uh, yeah. Awfully quiet. I wish I had the evening papers. Boo! Claudia! <laughs> you scared me. Sissy. <laughs> not at all. It's not nice to do that to people. You're always doing it, and you don't think it scares me. Where have you been? Your nose is cold. I've been to the little store around the corner. I needed some tomatoes. Boiled, stewed, or saute? Fresh. Fresh. Who, me? You and the tomatoes. <laughs> oh, David, this is the most convenient place to live. Just imagine if it weren't for that little store around the corner, we'd have to do without tomatoes for dinner. I don't know how we could manage. Oh, but seriously, it's true, isn't it? Of course it is. I did all the marketing for tomorrow. It's going to be delivered. It's a wonderful, wonderful century we live in. Can't ever be serious. I'm serious. What are you planning to do? Stand around in your coat all evening? Here, give it to me. I'll hang it up. Oh, just put it down on the chair. Sloppy. Put yourself down on the chair, too. Why should I? Oh, uh, because I want to sit in your lap. Mm, that's what I was afraid of. And now I'm going to put Shakespeare down on top of all of us. I am crushed. You should be flattered. Where's Bluff? He's in the bedroom, I guess. Doesn't he want to come in here and jump up on top of the heap? Should I call him? <laughs> oh, don't you dare. 
This is nice, isn't it? This is heavy. This is what I wait for all day. Don't you think you're overdoing it a little? Don't you like it? No, uh, I know what it feels like to be the bottom piece of a lettuce in, in a club sandwich. But <laughs> a deluxe club sandwich. A 75 cent sandwich. With a pickle. Claudia, you get your elbow out of my eye. What's the matter? Claudia, you're getting fur all over me now. What's the matter with a little cat fur? <laughs> Nothing except I don't like it. Uh, why don't you like it? Mm, I just don't, that's all. You don't mind a little dog fur, do you? Oh, that's different. Why? Because. I refuse to answer any more questions. I know why, because. Why? I'll just answer this one question, because dog fur, you think is more manly than cat fur. Ridiculous, ridiculous. You could say ridiculous, ridiculous, all you like, but that's the truth. Because you're a man, you think you have to go around being manly all the time. I can't think of a better reason, can you? Silly, but I'm glad you're a man. You are? It's nice, yes. Well, if you're so glad, stop getting cat fur all over me. Sweet little cat, don't you think? He doesn't even claw at any of the furniture. I think that's very unfair to Shakespeare. Cats have to claw at something besides your stocking. What do you want me to do, take him to the park on a leash? I look silly with a big dog in one hand and a little cat on the other. I think Shakespeare is a country cat. A what? I mean, I I think he ought to live on a farm where he can lap up all the milk he He wants. He gets all the milk he wants? On a farm, he can lap it up right out of the milk bucket. As it is, he falls into his saucer. He'd drown if he fell into a milk bucket. And in the country, he'd have trees to claw at to sharpen his toes and... And he could run up to the top and drop chestnuts as we pass All by. the chestnuts in this family are dropped by you, David Norton. Mm, Shakespeare, how do you feel about chestnuts? Hmm? He doesn't. He doesn't know what he's missing. Claudia, I am gasping for air. You're growing heavier by the minute. It's Shakespeare. He's growing. <laughs> David, how do you feel about a cup of tea? I'd feel good about anything if you'd get up off my lap. I'm not insulted. All right, I'm up. Hmm. Suddenly, I feel so light. I never appreciated your not sitting on my lap so much before. <laughs> That's why I sit on it. I am not insulted. Well, I'll put the kettle on. I'll be right back. Hurry up. Anything special? Does that have to be anything special because I like to talk to you when I get home? You've got plenty of opportunity. Darling, I can hardly breathe when you're sitting on my lap. How do you expect me to talk? Oh, there's the doorbell. I'll answer. You want me to go? You're so crushed. I don't see how you could possibly walk. Breathing and walking have nothing to do with each other. The groceries, David. Need any money? I paid in the store. You're getting smarter every day. Oh, isn't this the most convenient way to live? It's not bad. Not bad. It's delirious. If you put down that package, I'll let you sit on my lap. You will? Just to show you my heart's in the right place. Where is your heart? It's not on my lap. Here I am. Now. Now, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? Mm, I didn't want to talk to you about anything. You didn't? Funny, I had a feeling you did. No, nothing special. How are you feeling? Fine. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. But I'm not going to be a mother. Well, I'm not going to be a father, so we're even. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do all day? Oh, nothing. It got cold out this afternoon, so I stayed home. So nice and snug here. Fritz keeps the apartment nice and warm, doesn't he? There's an awful lot of trouble for him. Well, it does mean stoking the furnace several times a day. It does sound like a lot of trouble. I'm glad we don't have to worry about that sort of thing. Oh, I don't think I'd mind. Uh, you would if you had to do it. It's one of the great advantages of living in an apartment. You don't have to worry about things like heat, hot water, light plugs, faucets, and things like that. Well, there are lots of disadvantages, too. Name one. Well, it's artificial, sort of... Uh... 20th century cliff dwellers. We are mm -hmm. cliff dwellers? Mm -hmm. What are they? Cliff dwellers? They're cliff dwellers. The, the, the term is self-explanatory. Never heard they of them. Up. Where do they live? Now, they don't anymore. Well, you just said they did. I'm sorry. I mentioned them. So am I. Why you? Because it interrupted what it is you have to tell me. Me? I have nothing to tell you. Why? Got that look. What look? The new look? No, of having to tell me <laughs> something. Is it about the office? It's not about the office. Is it about Lottie? It is not about Lottie. Is it about Roger? Ooh, in a way. I knew it. In what way is it about Roger? Roger was up to Eastbrook yesterday. He saw a farmhouse. A farmhouse? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound so exciting. What about it? It was beautiful and it was for sale. David! No, he didn't buy it, darling. Oh, that's a relief. What could he possibly do with a silly old farmhouse in Eastbrook? He could live in it. What for? Well, lots of people live in farmhouses or even just plain houses in Eastbrook. Not people like us and Roger. We live in New York. We do now, but 
That doesn't mean that we'll always have to. Roger, you going to buy it? No, he has no intention of buying it. But it's a beautiful place, he says. Barns and everything. Barns? What for? Cows, milk. What do you think for? Why bother with a barn when you've got a back door? That's what I said. It's not the same thing at all, I don't think. The milk is. Milk is milk no matter where it comes from. That's all a matter of opinion. It is? Wouldn't you have a, a wonderful feeling of pride and ownership in a, a glass of milk that came from your own cow? No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't, huh? Would you? I might. Well, since Roger's not buying the place, there's no point in discussing it even, is there? No, but... Claudia. Hmm? Claudia, does does the land mean anything to you? What land, David? Land that you might own. Land that would that would be yours with, with trees and a, a brook and fields on it. it. I think it'd be just a nuisance. It'd be wonderful for Bluff and the baby. Bluff loves it here. And the baby isn't here yet, and the park is just around the corner waiting for him. Park's full of trees. It has a lake and everything. But it's not yours. Thank goodness. You should see all the men it takes to keep it looking nice in the summer. I think it'd be kind of uh, exciting to own a place of our own. To have it year after year. Not to pay rent to anybody. To have our children on it. To grow old on it. To David, hmm? you're not talking about Roger buying that farm. You're talking about us buying it. Don't be silly. I, I told Roger this after the room, this afternoon. I, I, I wasn't the least bit interested. You don't sound the least bit not interested. Well, certainly. I told him that. I said, Roger, I'm not interested. I, I told him that. What did you tell him? Claudia, I think you've talked me into something. David, me? And I think you've talked me into wanting that place, wanting it very much, even though I... Don't want it at all. Well, then what, 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 what? I mean, I mean, I don't want it today or tomorrow, but someday, darling, it'll be perfect for us. David, you're it. not making sense. I haven't said a word for it. I, 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 I like it here. The mail at the door, the newspaper, the milkman mama around the corner. Don't you remember this morning, darling? I like it here. You're right, Claudia. You're right, I, I love it here. That's why I wish you hadn't made me sound like Roger. Roger's a funny guy talking about that place, farmhouse and everything, because now, oh, what's the use? All I can think of is that blasted cow standing at our back door. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Whether you're planning a special party or you simply want to be ready for social emergencies, the smartest thing you can do, lady, is to see that there's plenty of Coca-Cola in the refrigerator. Then you can greet expected and unexpected guests with equal ease, knowing that a hearty welcome awaits them. For the pause that refreshes says better than words alone can. Grand to have you here. Relax and have a good time. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes.